Debbie and I'm a team member here in Essence Park at The Stitch and Dan. Today I'm going to talk to you about making napkins. These are going to be double-sided napkins and they have a more luxurious feel to them. You're going to be using, for four napkins, you're going to be using two yards or eight fat quarters. I'm going to start off by st walking over to the ironing board. When you first start, you're going to want to sew around your raw edges of your material an eighth of an inch from that raw edge. Then you're going to want to wash it. These are napkins and they're going to be washed often. You're going to be a lot happier with your finished product after it comes out of the dryer if you wash it now. So you're going to, after you wash it, then you're going to bring it back to your ironing board and you're going to use starch because you washed your sizing out of it in the wash machine. And you want, oops, I should show you the, the label. Best press is my favorite. And after you press it, which I've already done, so I'm just baking here. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna move this one. I'm gonna do some cutting. So I take my salvage edge, and these are batik, so you're not seeing your salvage is clear. So I'm using my Oh, salvage edge. By doing that, you're keeping your grain the same. Now, these are off of fat quarters. If you're using yardage, of course, it'll be larger than this. And I'm laying it down, and I'm going to fold this end over. Now, you have washed your fabric. It is going to shrink, so you're not going to get an 18-inch cut out of this no more. So I am going to cut this at 17 and a half. Let me line it up here. And this is a stripology ruler I'm using, and I need to check and make sure where all my, but yeah, okay. Fabric is, because I want to make sure I get all 17 and a half inches. So from this black dot right here, you can see I'm really close to the edge here, and over here, I'm coming close on underneath here. So I'm gonna trim this up. And 17 and a half on this side. Remove those, clean this one up. Then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna open these. Now, now these are the two fabrics that I'm gonna to put together. And I'm gonna line that line up really nice and clean here on the top this time, because that's already been cut. And if you have one of the big rulers, you can take and just use it and cut it down to 17 and a half by 17 and a half square. But I like the stripology rulers. And then 17 and a half over here also. Now I wanna leave these together. Now I'm using batiks, and I forgot to mention that if you're not using batiks, you would want to put your right sides together before you begin cutting. Because what you're doing is you're helping it stay together when you take it over to the iron, or not to the iron, I'm sorry, to the sew machine. And it's, um, it, it's easier to do that this way and not have to pin it off. I'm gonna move over to the sew machine now. So if you get dizzy, hold on. Paula's bringing you as carefully as she can. So I'm going to sew a half inch seam on all four sides, but I am going to leave about a four inch opening on this. And you wanna stop a half an inch before you get to your end. Drop your needle down to that half inch, spin it around. I'm using my plate right here to tell me where my half inch is. And by ironing it together, you can see that the fabric's staying together shift a little fraction but it's not going to shift enough to be an issue. And I'm going to come back around. Put my needle down. And you can see this one shifted a little bit. It's about a sixteenth of an inch here.
load out the machine's bouncer. Oops, I'm getting a little too carried away here. There we go. Spin it around. One more side, and then we'll come back up and catch the end. made three other ones and I didn't have this much shifting. I think I'm trying to be fast with you ladies or gentlemen. Okay, this is my last one. Now you can see where I started at and I'm going to stop four inches from here. And I'm going to back stitch. And I should have back stitched at the beginning of this because we're going to turn it and when you turn it that's going to take your stitches out. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to clip right up to that point mark there but not across that stitch at all and I'm going to cut all four sides like that. I think this one really did shift because I was trying to be fast. Okay, and now I'm going to turn it and then we're going to go back over and I'll finish turning it at the iron by my opening. So I take my opening and I just pull the fabric through. So let's go over to the iron. I've got one that's partially done to show you. Okay, so this one I partially already turned and I'm gonna use the purple thing and I'm going to make sure all of my points are coming out. You don't have to be able to get your hand in that opening in order to turn it either. But just make sure you leave it enough. If you go smaller than three inches, you might really have issues and you don't want to tear the fabric on the seam. So I'm pushing all four sides out. Make sure it gets out too. Sometimes it looks like it's out. See this one here? It's not out. It just looks like it's out. There we go. So I did that. Now I'm not going to pin again. So this one here I'm almost finished with. I've taken and I pressed, kind of do a rolling of the edges to get it nice and snug like this. And you're going to do that all the way around. I generally start over here on my opening, and here's my opening. Start over here and I work my way all the way around. So I'm gonna finish this edge up. Press. Now press. And then this is my last one before I get right to that opening again. So I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna press. Now you're using two-sided colors here. So if this side happens to show slightly on the edge here, it's just going to be an embellishment to it. So I'm gonna grab the corners here and just give a slight tug and I'm gonna finger press this down and I'm happy with that. It's nice and straight still. I'm gonna put the iron on it. If I can get away with not using pins, if there's a way to figure it out, I will use it. See how nice and crisp that is? I hope you can see these colors. I tried to use colors that showed. I'm gonna take you back to the sewing machine where I have another one that I've already started top stitching. So when I start top stitching, I don't start on my opening. I start on the side that's away from the opening because you have a tendency to worry about that too much. 
and you're going to shift your fabric by pushing and pulling and not letting the machine do what it's supposed to do. So let the machine do its job and pull your fabric through for you. And you can see that I started with about a sixteenth of an inch seam there. And I'm going to just finish that up. And you're not going to backstitch until you're at the very end, but I'm starting in a place I already started, so I'm backstitching here. And again, it's about a sixteenth of an inch. You want to get as close to the edge that you can comfortably go around. If you try to get right on the edge, you're going to be going off constantly. And when I come up to the end, put my needle down, turn it around. Isn't that nice how it just flows around? Start off slow so you don't grab it into your feed dogs there. And I'm coming up to the ending. This is where I started. And it doesn't, don't start on a point. I actually started to see how I started in the middle of this. If you start on a point, you're liable to get that point caught in your feed dogs. So I'm going to just, I've backstitched that. I'm gonna pull this over now to where my 3 8 seam would be. And I'm gonna run it around it again. Isn't it nice to sew without pins? Okay, now I want to make sure I keep my distance over here on the edge to where it's about the same distance. Spin it around. Oops, I got one more stitch I need to add into that. Spin it around. I'm back out on three eighths. And what you get with this edge is that it gives it a crisper feel when, it's, when people are placing it in their lap. It also allows it not to roll as much when you're putting it in the washer and dryer. I think I got one more stitch to add to that. So I have a freehand system. If you've noticed, I've been able to lift my foot up without You'll have to stop and lift your foot if you don't have a free hand system. I'm not just spinning this fabric underneath the foot here. Yep. Almost there. Oh, not quite. Hang on there. <laughs> One more round. One more corner. This is where I started just now. When you're making these napkins, you want to use quality fabric, so you want to go make sure that you get it from your local quilt store, but we prefer you to get it from the Stitch and Den because you're going to notice a huge difference on how these hold up as napkins. Here I come. I'm coming up on the ending, and I didn't do a back stitch then, but I did a little one there, and I am done. Here is your napkin. Okay, well, thank you for joining me, and please come visit us at The Stitch and Din or visit us online at thestitchanddin.com.